Hello everyone, welcome back to my series on imposition. I know I did a video a little while ago, it's probably a couple of years now, on uh, some of the older software and I've had nothing but questions uh, with the program not working properly. Well, I thought I'd do an update on that since there's some new software out and available for us to use, which I think is perfect for the hobby book binder. We've got Montax Imposer. Today, I'm going to go through a couple of uh, quick imposition styles that are good for the hobby book binder, cover what's covered in the free version, and uh, some of the considerations you might want for upgrading the program if you feel like uh, spending a couple of dollars. All right, I'm going to jump right into it. In Compitech.com, I have no, oh, sorry, I should say, I have no relation to either Montax Imposer or this website. These are just tools that I use, I found, and I like. Um, so use them at your own discretion. Okay, uh, this website, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I find this to be absolutely perfect for generating the dot grid paper for bullet journals, etc. So follow the link. Down here, you've got all the settings that you want. I change that to centimeters. We want two dots per centimeter. That'll be five mil um, difference between the dots. The default gray is a bit light for me. I like uh, this one. So this is A9, 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 but choose it as you like. It doesn't have A5 as one of the default options. So you'll have to put that in yourself, 14.8 by 21 centimeters, zero margin, and that'll say A5 there. Once you've done that, download the PDF. Might be an ad or two. Okay, all right, the PDF's downloaded here as square dots. Open it up and you've just got a single A5 page of dots. Um, this is gonna be the basis for our first test of the imposition software. So the software we're gonna be covering today is Montax Imposer. I'll put the link to this also in the description. Like I said, I'm not related to the company at all. I know nothing about them other than I randomly saw a link to it not long ago on uh, Reddit, I think it was. So I've downloaded it and I must say I'm very happy with the way it works. Um, I know a lot of the people I deal with have been writing their own, pretty much everyone just writes their own software to take care of it. This will pretty much stop me from doing that now. Uh, I've written my own. I'll probably end up deleting it because this is almost perfect for what I need. Okay, download. We've got a few options here in the download section. Impose, Montax also comes in two forms. You can either have it as the plugin for Acrobat or just as a standalone app on its own. Um, today, we're gonna to be covering the standalone app. If I get time in the future, I'll do the Acrobat plugin. It also has a few options like uh, VDP, which I think is variable data printing or something like that, and hot folders. We just want the basic Montax app free today. Download that, install it the usual way. Okay, once you've got that done, open it up and you should see a screen similar to this one. This window just lets you know the limitations of the free version. So the maximum sheet size is A4 and the number of positions is limited to four. That's on each side of the page. Sorry, on each side of the sheet. Um, you can choose not to show it again if you like. I'll keep it up for a little bit to remind myself. And the view you have when you first start will probably be something more like this. So I'm gonna cover three types of imposition today. The first is just going to be a single page with the four, so the doc grid paper that I prepared earlier from the website will be repeated out four times. So two on the front, two on the back. That way I can print out as many of those pages as I want, turn them into notebooks. The second will be a booklet print or an a, uh, section in position. This is for printing books, uh, textbooks, so that the pages of the book are printed in the right order for you to be able to create sections or signatures. The third style will be a section or signature that's printed on a portrait page with four pages per side to be folded down into a uh, into a signature. And I'll cover how to do the folding and the printing and the imposition itself. I want to talk a little more about the term signatures. Uh, you'll hear me occasionally refer to signatures as sections. Now, this is actually the far more accurate term. The use of signatures as a term for sections started in the US around the early 20th century. And for some reason, it's uh, caught on. My teacher was mortified each time a new student would use uh, the term signatures. But there's also choirs and gatherings. However, I'll leave a discussions for that for another time. 
The reason I try and use sections instead of signatures is that signatures are actually used in book printing. They're not as common anymore and I don't like using the same name for two different things as it can get confusing. A signature is a printed mark, usually a letter or a number or sometimes a symbol on the first page of each section. So this book is from 1934. And you can see the letter at the bottom of the page here, a little G, that's the signature. This helps the binder collate the book in the correct order. Um, sometimes instead of a signature, you'll see collation marks on the spine. It's usually in more modern books. So this is a modern um, version of The Hobbit. And you can see the collation marks on the spine. So the moral of all this is that the term uh, signatures is pretty much everyone's using now. So I'll try and do my best to use the term signatures. However, if you hear me say sections, it's because I've dropped back in using to the terms that I'm used to. Anyway, feel free to let me know what you think about this down below and we'll get back to creating the first imposition. Okay, with that little controversy finished now, just come up here to file import and the square dots that we had will be imported. Now it's only a single page, so it only brings in the first page uh, to be filled in. What we want to do is repeat that page out front and back twice. Uh, so checking that you're on two sheet mirrored and up from start, you want enable from beginning, repeat it four times. Once you've done that, you'll see that all four are filled out. Then it's as simple as file, export imposition into PDF. And you'll see here it puts an I after the, the file name. That's just to tell you it's the imposed version. Click save. Correctly generated, excellent. Come to Explorer, we'll open up the PDF that was created. And you can see here you've got four um, copies of the doc grid page printed on two sides of the sheet of paper. To print this file, print. And what you want to do is after you selected your printer, print on both sides of the paper. You need it to be landscape and flip on short edge. That will make sure that the top of the page is always the top of the page front and back. If you flip on the long edge, it'll be upside down on the back. Uh, because this option wasn't always around in printing, some of the older software, and I believe Montax does it as well, although you shouldn't need to use it these days, um, had the option to reverse the second page, the back page of each piece of paper. So we shouldn't need to do that these days. You should have this option flip on short edge now, landscape and we hit print and we'll go grab that off the printer and I'll show you how to fold it. I've printed about 40 sheets of the A4 dock grid paper here on short grain A4 paper. I'll take four sheets at a time, fold them, one crease with the bone folder, maybe a second if it hasn't worked as much as I like, put it aside, uh, making sure I keep the tops of each section the same so they all look the same in the book. Okay, we're back in our Montax Imposer. The second one we're going to talk about is how to create an imposition for creating signatures or sections in a book. Yeah, we don't need the repeating pages anymore. And we'll go File, New Imposition. And you'll see it removes all of the previous uh, PDFs that you've imported. Now, we want a booklet this time. I better import the PDF. So what I've done is I've just created a book as if it was A5 size pages. So that's the final size of the book is going to be A5. And I just numbered each page 1 to 32 so that after we've printed it and folded it, we can check that everything's in the right order. So once you've selected booklet, uh, you can see here that it's created the whole thing like it's one single signature to be folded up. Uh, so you could take all, uh, what would that be? four pages, eight pages, and uh, fold them together. So them up as a single section, but that'd be quite big. So we want that to be two sections. Now on uh, Montax Imposer, that is a expert mode option. So in imposition, expert mode. And you see quite a few more options have appeared. Up in groups is where we get our signatures. So we want signatures or fold together. Number of sheets in the signature, this is number of sheets of paper. So I like to have four sheets per signature. That's 16 pages in a signature. So my total book in this case, because it's 32 pages long in this sample one, is two sections or two signatures. Okay. Don't worry about the fold sheets together. We'll cover that in the next one. All right. Once you've done that, file. 
export. Output. And you can see it's just taken the original file name, put an eye after it, hit save. Now, some of the other software that we've talked about in the past has created each section as a separate PDF file. Uh, you do have the option to do this in Montax if you really want to. Um, I find it easy just to print the whole thing and just make sure I'm very careful when I'm folding it, uh, selecting four pages at a time. Uh, you can come into File, Export Options. Oop, don't know what's down there. And you can split output into separate PDFs, okay? Uh, but you do need to say how many sheets uh, in each split. So uh, I'll let you play around with that. Test it out before you do it on a great big giant book. Um, like I said, I find it easy now to just do it as the one PDF and print it out. Okay, let's have a look at the output. We have a single file. So what I'm expecting is the first eight pages in this file uh, will be 116, 215, 314, uh, 413, and so on and so forth until we get to uh, the middle two pages, which should be, I think, eight and nine off the top of my head. Then the second uh, lot of pages will continue on with the next section, so 32, 17, 31, 16, and whatnot. So once they're folded and collated, they should all show up as a single book. All right, so file print. Now, because we've only got two pages per um, side, it's exactly the same as before. We want landscape. Uh, print on both sides of the paper, flip on short edge, and that should print it all out. The other thing you do want to do is make sure, I didn't say this before, but make sure that your printer does collate. Otherwise, everything will be the wrong way around. All right, we'll print that out, and uh, I'll show you how to fold it up. So this one's pretty much the same as the last one. Bearing in mind, you've got to keep track of uh, four pages at a time so that you keep the page numbers correct in your final book. So take the four sheets of paper, fold them in half, quick crease with the bone folder, and then we can see pages one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and through to 16, all in order, imposed properly. Okay, the last one we want to do is a uh, four pages per side of the sheet of paper. This helps in um, cutting down on printing time because you can print less pieces of paper. Uh, it tends to be a bit faster, might work with, uh, saves you having to cut down from A3 to A4 if you've got A3 uh, the right with the grain in the right direction that you want. So to do this, we want a new imposition. File, open. Um, no, sorry, not open. File, import. Oh, it's close. Okay, file, import. Now, I did this as A6, 32 pages. The reason is, if you remember when we first opened it up, the maximum size for the free version is A4. So if you have four A5 pages on the side, it will... Um, it will become an A3 size piece of paper. The free version doesn't allow for that. If you do happen to have an A5 original size book that you do want to do this to, there is the option in here to scale it. So you can scale it. I'll show you the... Uh... All right, what I might do is show you how to do it with this A5 booklet. And then when we do the final one, we'll do it with the A6. Okay, there's a couple of preset ones down the bottom here that you can use. You do not want to use the eight pages per sheet, one fold, one booklet, two up. Um, if you see here the way it's got the sheet numbers, it's to be cut in half so that there's one book on the top, one book on the bottom. It's just, again, for printing out multiple um, copies of a book at once. We are looking for this one here, eight pages, uh, sorry, cross fold, eight pages per sheet, cross fold. You can see the top numbers here are upside down, and that's what we're really looking for. Okay, uh, we want to split into six signatures or fold together. We want number of sheets in the signature. Um, you can just do this with one sheet per signature. That'll be eight pages. 
personally, I like two per signature. So we're back to the 16 pages from the original book per signature. And that gives us two in total for the whole book. And in this time though, we wanna fold the sheets together. If you don't have the fold sheets together, you'll need to fold each individual sheet down, then put the second sheet after it's folded down on top and then fold them together. That's an extra step which doesn't need to be done. And I'll show you how to fix a problem with the fold sheets together. For the moment though, fold sheets together and we want two um, to fold together at the same time, okay? So two in the signature and we're gonna fold both of them together at the same time. Now you'll see the top pages are upside down. That's because we're gonna be folding down first. We're gonna then make a cut and then we're gonna fold across and then all the pages will be in the right order. Now you'll notice down here in red, you've exceeded the limit of this program version. Max sheet size is basically A4. Uh, we've, because we've got the five, four A5s on a page, it's gone up to A3 size. So we can scale that. And change page size, we want it to go down to 50%. Okay, and you see that's disappeared and it's shrunk the pages down. I believe that if you did this with text or images, I haven't tried it yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure you'll lose some uh, fidelity in the text. I'd be more inclined to print it, uh, export the PDF originally in what you want the final page size to be. So I'll cancel that. And what we'll do is we'll, new in position, we'll import the one that I did in A6. Okay, signatures off all together. We, oh, sorry, down here we want, Cross fold, two, fold together, two. Everything looks pretty good, yes. And file, export into PDF, output. And like I said, same as before, just with the eye afterwards. Okay, printing this one is a little different from before. So we'll open up the A6. So you can see the four four pages on the one piece of paper on the one side. So file print. And what we want to do this time is we want it to be portrait, print on both sides and flip on the long edge. So the default should work out for us. All right, we'll hit print. I'll go grab that off the printer and show you how to cut and fold this. Slightly different to the previous examples. All right, this one's a little more difficult than the last two, but not, uh an insurmountable problem for most people. So again, you need to make sure you've only got the pages you need for your section. In this case, we're using two sheets of paper per section. You need to fold it so that the one and the 16 are on the outside. So the first and the last page of the section is on the outside. Give it a fold. Okay, then get your boot knife and you wanna make a slit along the fold that goes from the edge to just past halfway or to as far past halfway as you want. You don't need to go the full distance. You actually don't wanna go the full distance. That extra little bit will be cut off when you do the final trim on the book, either with the plow or the guillotine. And now this can be folded so that the one and the 16 are on the outside of the section and the two middle pages are on the inside of the section. Give it a quick uh, fold with the bone folder. And you'll notice that there isn't the big build up in the corner because you made that cut that goes through further than halfway. And now you should have a section that has pages one through 16 on it. So I'm just gonna cut the rest of the fold now to show you the pages. Normally you wouldn't do this now. It'll be cut off with the final trimming of the book. So all the pages should be there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16. Excellent. All right, that's Montax Imposer.
there are a lot of other options that I have not even come close to covering in here that I've seen. You've got um, different trim marks, bleed marks you can add that uh, printing companies would use. I suspect this is actually a more professional uh, software. Um, numbering on objects. You've got all sorts of stuff. You can uh, It can read tags from the PDF file that can give it imposition instructions when it imports them. But there's a lot of things that can be done in this. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, stick them down below. I'm pretty good at getting back on questions. It just may take me a little while sometimes. I do have a two-year-old now. Um, so leave questions down below. If you disagree with what I was saying earlier about signatures or any of those markings, feel free to uh, tell me your thoughts down there. I'm sure you will anyway. And uh, in the meantime, feel free to join us on uh, on Reddit. You'll be able to find me on Reddit or we actually have a Discord. Uh, I'll put the link to our Discord down below. Um, you will find a lot of uh, just hobbyist bookbinders having fun in there. Uh, we do a monthly challenge and answer any questions that people have got. So uh, if you've got any questions, pop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.